Hello, Skytech here. I uh, just wanted to give you a little tear down and look at my uh, Unihertz Titan, which is a phone that I got off of Kickstarter. God, I want to say two or three years ago it's been now. And um, I got in really early on this, so this is probably not the exact phone that they're now selling. Um, I mean, it's really similar. There might be some little differences. I'm not exactly sure. I'll get into that a little bit more later on. But I've had this for a while. It's been my daily driver phone for ever since I got it. Um, so I just wanted to kind of go over some of the experiences I've had with it and some of the good and some of the bad. Um, I apologize for my video setup. This is not where I normally film and this is not the camera I normally use. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to autofocus. So it is what it is. You know, if you don't like it, don't watch the video. Um, this, this phone, uh, I, I really like the keyboard. Uh, I was a big Blackberry fanboy back in the day. The last one I had though was the Pearl. So, you know, it's been a while and I've had a few ruggedized smartphones. That's another thing about this phone. If you don't know about this phone, this is a ruggedized smartphone. It's really thick. It's really heavy. Um, you could probably kill somebody with it if you really had to. Uh, it feels... It feels like it has a case on it, but there is no case. This is just how it looks. Uh, and they advertise this as water resistant. I don't remember what the IP rating was, but they, they, they did advertise that it has some water resistance. And that's another thing I'm gonna go into today because uh, especially on the Facebook groups, this, there's, some, there's some debate about the actual waterproofing of this phone. And I'm gonna try to clear that up if I can. Um, you can see there's signs of wear. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but the chrome is coming off these back parts that's normal i mean it's been in and out of my pocket probably a thousand times um, these panels on the side are actually aluminum and you can see that there's a pretty it's hard to tell on the camera there's a pretty significant dent right there uh, there's a burn mark right here that's actually where this phone um, came in the way of a fairly powerful laser and it survived uh, the worst thing I've done to this phone is I left it sitting on the side rail of my truck bed at one point and drove off and luckily I heard it fall off. It hit the side of my truck and then the asphalt. I was probably going about 30 miles an hour and you can see there's a little bit of a ding here on the corner and the rubber's peeling up just a tiny bit. Uh, I wish this camera didn't suck so hard but that that's the extent of the damage from falling off my truck. Um, don't Think there's any other significant dings here oh, there's a pretty good sized dent right in the middle of the the unihertz logo on the front um and you know just paints peeling there's a pretty good chunk missing right there overall though still works i use this phone every day this is my only phone that i've used for the last couple of years except for i tried switching to a flip phone just as an experiment and it didn't go well um so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to I'm going to go over some of the I'm going to take this phone apart first of all, and I'm going to talk about some of the waterproofing features that this thing has. Um, I'm not particularly doing you know I'm not trying to I'm not taking this apart with the intent of fixing anything. Uh, I have taken it apart before. I took it apart immediately when I got it, and I took it apart several months ago to try to fix an issue with the speaker, which is actually still occurring, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, but I just wanted to show everybody, you know, some of the insides. If some people haven't seen the inside of this phone and are curious about the build quality and stuff. So, um, first of all, let me go find you some music so I can show you the issue I'm having with the speaker. So this is some music from the free YouTube library so I don't get copyright striked. And you can probably hear the problem right away. Um, the Titan does have a mono speaker. So only one of these on the back is a speaker. Um, this one. You can, you can probably tell there's there's some distortion there. I'll hold it up near the microphone so you can really hear it. And it gets worse if I turn the volume up. Now you can really hear it. It's bad. It, it sort of goes away if you turn it down almost all the way. Actually, now it doesn't really sound that bad at all. But anything with bass, um, any spoken word content, like the podcast, stuff like that, there's a decent amount of distortion. It's still usable, but it's annoying. Um, and this, this is something that started fairly recently, and I think I know why. I think it might be my fault. But um, one thing, I, oh, I should have showed you that. One thing I have noticed is if, 
if while it's playing oh. oh YouTube is so wonderful okay if, it's, if while it's playing you push down on the screen it gets a little quieter I'm just applying light pressure with my thumb here it gets a little quieter but the distortion goes away and it stays away for a little while but it will eventually come back so um, this is one of the things I did like about this phone right when I got it the speaker is very loud and I think that has to, that has something to do with this there's a lot of you know for something that loud and, and I'm gonna show you how large the speaker actually is in a minute here but that's a pretty small hole so you're creating a lot of acoustic pressure inside of here which it can be problematic for a few reasons it can pull it can suck um, water in first of all which I, and that can cause you know repeatedly that can cause damage if you're using this in a wet environment which I do I should I should I should say that I do use this phone in a wet environment I listen to podcasts in the shower with this phone every day um, so and I'm not saying that I'm you know holding it and letting the water run over it but it sits on a shelf and uh, it gets wet I dry it off with a towel and I'm done and there's been a few times when the phone fell um, into you know cruddy things like I'm working on cars or something like that and I've uh, put it under the faucet and washed it off so you know it's and it's still working so you know there is some waterproofing there and I'm going to show you that in a minute here so let's take this apart um, I, I should also say that I'm not a professional at this I have taken apart quite a few phones I've taken apart every phone that I've ever owned and I fixed a lot of iPads and stuff for people but this isn't what I do for a living so I, I this is not necessarily a how-to video this is this is you and me exploring this phone together um, just this that's that's just a, a disclaimer you know I don't want to I don't want I'm sure I'm doing this wrong and I'm sure people are gonna tell me that so I, I just want you to know that I know that I don't know what the hell I'm doing so to get this open um, this is actually a fairly easy smartphone to take apart there's no heat gun or anything like that required um, there's very low odds of damaging this like there is with iPhones for example there's a really or certain Samsung phones I've had in the past there's a real good chance of cracking the screen when you take it apart this isn't like that this is a very easy phone to take apart so you're gonna need a T6 um, it's a Torx bit and that you use to take out these four screws on the back of the phone Now you'll notice there's also four smaller screws right here around this little bezel. You don't need to take those off. Just leave those alone. They are actual screws, and I believe that I took them off when I first took this phone apart. Um, I don't really remember. It's been a long time. I think this bezel actually does come off, but you don't need to take those out to take the phone apart. So next you're going to take these screws out on along the side here, and I believe... Oh, <laughs> uh, programmable button just turned the flashlight on. I believe these are also T6 but they're they're cut a little bit weird so it feels like it's the wrong size but I, I assure you it is oh yeah one thing you'll notice about this the stock Titan this is the power the power button over here and this is the programmable button on this normally you'll see the programmable button will be red and the power button will be silver uh, they're the same piece so I swapped them the first time I took this apart just I don't know just made me feel special so uh, we're just gonna take these three screws out on each side here and you'll see that this little side bezel will start to pop off. So now I have all three screws out. You do not need to take your SIM card out for this. Um, you can if you want, doesn't really matter. Um, but you don't need to take it out to take the phone apart. So I'm going to put that bezel there. And you can see it's a little bit of moisture under here I took a shower this morning um, but this actually isn't a big deal because this that's not where the waterproofing is there will be water under this area here um, there's a rubber barrier around the sim card tray when you take it out um, and there's a seal inside here that I'm going to show you in a minute but you'll see now we've exposed a bunch of Phillips screws here um, let's take the other side off
flashlight just wants to turn on. I will say I really do like that programmable button on the side. It's really, it's really great. Um, use it all the time. So when you take this apart, oh, and I should have said too that um, these buttons will pop out. Now this is something that I believe might be unique to the earlier iterations of this phone. Um, these are actually just milled pieces of aluminum. And you can see here, um, I don't know if you can actually see it on the camera, but you can see um, lines on here from when this was milled. So this may, this may be a piece of plastic on the newer uh, versions of this phone, but I don't really know. I haven't taken one of those apart. So all your buttons are gonna come off. We're gonna keep those over there so far. All the screws from the back are the same and all the screws from the sides are the same. So you don't need to worry about mixing those up. Um, there's no like length differences or anything like that. I'm gonna use my screwdriver here to turn this camera off now that the, or to turn the flashlight off now that the button's gone. Okay, so now we're gonna switch to a Phillips and we're gonna take all these screws out of the side. All right, and this is a P0 sized Phillips. Um, pretty sure that's the right size. It seems to work really well. There's a lot of screws here, so. And these, again, these screws are all the same size, so you, can, you don't need to worry about mixing them up. Just keep them separate from the ones for the rear. But they look pretty different, so that's not really a problem. I do like that they put a lot of screws on here. Um, it's it's kind of annoying when you're taking it apart, but uh, this this seal that these screws are holding in is where the waterproofing is. So I appreciate it. I appreciate that they actually took the time to really retain this rather than just using clips everywhere, like uh, some new phone manufacturers I won't mention. Um, this does give me hope that you know sometimes when you drop. A phone that is held together with clips one of the clips comes out or breaks and then there goes your waterproofing so this 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 gives me hope that you know it would last it already has lasted me quite a while and it, i think it'll last a lot longer so you can you might need a spludger from this point but you could probably just get your fingernail under here there are clips along the top and bottom okay, i'll just use a spludger or a guitar pick here um, and just sort of run it along top and in the bottom edge here and now this back part just lifts off so as we can see one of the actually one of the main selling points for me on this phone was this battery and it's huge it's like um, the size of something you'd expect to see in like a, a good sized battery bank or something like that it's not it's way bigger than what you normally see in a phone these two ribbon cables here it's hard to tell, but I put tape on these. These were just sort of flopping around in the breeze when I got this thing. Um, and I thought maybe that was what was causing the distortion in the speaker, so I taped those down. Didn't really do anything, but um, made me feel better. Um, let's go to the back here. Up here, uh, you can kind of see this circular outline. That's your wireless charging antenna, and these are the contacts for that. Not really sure why there's four, but um, that's what that is. Uh, you can see it's kind of lower down in the back of the phone, so you're your hotspot for charging is gonna be right around here. Um, in here, you've got your vibration motor uh, for the vibrate function, and these two pins here connect to what I believe is the Bluetooth antenna. I could be wrong about that. Um, and these two right here are for the speaker, and the speaker is behind this pad here. So let's go ahead and take these screws out, and I'll show you what that looks like. There are four screws back here, and these are also P0 Phillips. Um, they are different from the case screws, so uh, you wanna keep these separate, keep them in their own little pile. They're pretty obviously different though. It's, it's hard to get them mixed up. Another interesting detail about this, 
all the screws that I've taken out of this phone, with the exception of the stainless steel ones for the bezels on the side, uh, have thread locker on them. It's hard to tell, but there's a little bit of blue stuff on the side of this screw, which is nice. Uh, it's pretty standard, really, for a, you know, a device like this with you know, fasteners this small that are, um, you know, it's going to be in a vibration environment. It's pretty standard, but it's nice to see. I mean, this phone costs $300. This is not a, an expensive flagship phone. Um, but, and for, for that kind of money, it's nice to see, you know, this level of attention to detail. Oh yeah, while we're in here, before I take this apart, let's talk about waterproofing. This around the edge here, it's hard to see, that is a butylene nitrile uh, injection molded uh, seal, water seal. Um, so that, that is the, where, that's what's doing a huge percentage of the heavy lifting for your waterproofing. And that's really nice, actually. This is more than what I've seen on phones that cost twice this much. Um, this is really good. As far as I'm concerned, this is, this is excellent. Um, you can see it where it, there's sort of a flat face that runs along here. If you do take your phone apart, this is something you're going to want to clean before you put it back in. Make sure there's no dirt or debris on either this rubber part or this flat edge that runs around here that it sits on because that's going to screw up your water resistance. It does go right along the chin on the bottom here and right along the top. So if there is going to be any issues, this is where it's going to happen because these are areas where you could have impact damage or, um, you know, ingress of particulate, which could compromise the sealing ability of this. So now let's talk about this speaker. Again, butylene nitrile uh, seal, or maybe not. That might actually be silicone. I can't tell. That one's sort of different than the one around the edge. But that seals this little speaker box here. And that whole black thing in there is your speaker. And you can tell how huge that is compared to that hole. That's a big speaker. Um, that's why it's so loud. And this is this metal stuff over here is an antenna. And that's pretty much all that's in here. I believe that there's actually sort of a resonation thing over here, but I'm not really sure what that is. There's a little hole there. What is that? I don't know what that is. But... Um, when I first opened this, um, and this is why I'm thinking that it was my fault that the speaker's the way it is. Um, I work in an area that, well, I work and play in an area where there's a lot of metal shavings around for various reasons. So when I opened this up, um, this whole thing was about half filled with uh, iron filings um, that had come through this little screen over the thing here, which is going to happen. Uh, this is a big magnet, so, you know, iron loves magnets. So what I've done since then when the audio gets really bad is I get a big neodymium magnet and I hold it right up to the back of this phone and it will actually suck a lot of those iron filings right through that and back out. Uh, and that does actually help considerably. I don't know if you can tell there's a little bit of brown schmoo right there and I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Uh, you want to be careful when you're cleaning this because this whole thing is sort of suspended. This is actually a diaphragm in here. Um, you may not even want to touch this. What I usually do is I get a Q-tip and I clean it. I've done it fairly recently. Right now it's pretty clean. Um, but you, I, I get a Q-tip and some alcohol and just kind of rub the surface of that. Um, and you want to sort of look down in here and make sure there's no junk. I really wish that Unihertz would make it so I could just buy this whole piece. I haven't been able to find it anywhere. I've inquired on the Facebook page. I've looked around Reddit doesn't seem like anybody sells this, but this right here, this little jelly bean part with all this stuff, this would be a huge thing for me. Um, I would love to be able to purchase one of these for a reasonable price. Um, so let's move on here a little bit. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm not really sure what this is, but under this logo on the back here, there's, you can sort of see there's two little holes here, top and bottom, and there's a seal around something right here. And I believe that lines up with this little guy, this little rubber thing. So I'm not really sure what that is, if that's maybe something to relieve pressure when this goes up and down in altitude so it doesn't, you know, blow a seal out or suck water in or something like that. But it just feels like a little rubber thing. It's not a speaker. Um, but yeah, that's kind of an interesting thing. I'm not really sure what that's for. Oh yeah, and to the people that have said that the other 
side of this grill here is like a barometer or a microphone or something like that. Nope. Just lines up with this Bluetooth antenna. There's nothing there. Uh, it's got a piece of tape over the back of it. Uh, I feel like you could probably peel this off, but then you'd really compromise your water proofing. Um, so it's possible that they were planning to put something there at one point. This hole does actually go all the way through, but there's nothing there. It doesn't do anything. All right, so let's talk about this guy. Uh, where to begin? So one of the big things that I've heard people say um, compromises the water resistance. Oh yeah, and by the way, it's, it's fine. I can have this on. Don't worry, but don't, everybody calm the fuck down. I'm not going to get electrocuted or anything like that. Um, at least I hope not. Uh, people talk about the keyboard on this as being a potential, um, you know, area of concern with waterproofing. Um, that is true. I can understand why you'd think that. That's, it's not really that big of a deal though. And I'm going to tell you why. So the way this keyboard is designed, uh, I can't take it apart because it's, it's not really, it's not easily serviceable, which is kind of annoying. But the way that they do this is there's, there's a, there's two layers of plastic on the outside. And then there's a layer of con conductive material and then a inner layer with these little sort of blister buttons and then another layer of conductive material. And, and that's where the tracks are so the whole the whole keyboard is sandwiched though the conductive part of the keyboard is sandwiched in plastic so it's you know it's not gonna that's not a, a it, it, the keyboard buttons themselves aren't really susceptible to moisture um, as far as moisture getting in there's no real sealing around the keys themselves that I'm aware of um, but here's why that's not an issue if you look right here you see this white this is the, the uh, ribbon cable for the keyboard and i believe the um, fingerprint sensor and this white stuff around here that's potting compound what it's sort of like epoxy um, so this is completely sealed off this keyboard area under here is completely sealed off from the inside of the phone there's no way that water is going to come through this keyboard and into the interior of the phone itself as far as the keyboard itself i'm not too worried about the buttons the only thing that might be of concern, and I don't really know, I haven't been able to get into there, is the fingerprint scanner, um, and the, which is basically the home button. And apparently, if you get OTA updates, you can use this to like swipe or something like that. I don't know why you'd want to do that. I don't get OTA updates. But um, that, might, that might be a concern. I don't know how water resistant this is. But as far as the keyboard goes, it's fine. And it's not letting water into the inside of the phone. That's not an issue. The other point of concern is the headphone jack. And let me just take some of these screws out around the edge here. There's some screws holding this piece of plastic right here in. And uh, we'll take a look at that. Now these screws up here are the same as the screws that hold the speaker assembly in. So you can put those in the same pile. And they're all the same size. Some of these didn't want to come out completely, but um, they're stuck in the bezel here. But once you get all those, I think it's six screws out of there, um, this whole piece of plastic sort of just lifts out. And you want to be sort of careful with this. There's no uh, ribbon connectors to go to it. It does have the LEDs for the flash and um, some more antenna material up here. So you kind of want to be careful with this. And I believe that these pins here, um, I believe there's an antenna behind this bezel or something. Maybe it's just grounded. I'm not really sure. But um, those little pins pass through to that bezel. It's probably just grounded, actually, because now that I'm looking at it, it just goes onto this metal can here. Okay, so now we're in here a little bit further. You can see the headphone jack. Um, honestly, for me, this is the biggest concern for the water resistance of this phone. It's sort of hard to tell, but it looks to me like... Let me see if I can actually get this out of here. I don't think I can. No, I can't. I don't want to rip it, but um, it looks to me like they basically just covered this up with Kapton tape. 
Um, now I'm not sure if this is how it is in the actual production module, you know, versions of this phone. This is this may be a band-aid fix just to get it out the door. Um, but that that's a little bit concerning. There's a product that I don't actually have in here right now because I was using the headphone port. I very rarely use my headphone port. I use Bluetooth headphones for everything. Um, there's a product you can buy on Amazon for dirt cheap that's just a little rubber bung that goes in a headphone port. I'd recommend that if you're going to be getting this water, you know, in water a lot. That's probably a good idea because this, to me, seems like the area where water would get in. And it's right next to the motherboard and all this other crap here. So if, if a decent amount of water got in there, it could easily cause problems. Um, the SIM card is another potential issue, but I don't see it. It's got a good, it's got a good seal. I don't think that's going to be an issue. You don't obviously don't want to take your SIM card out in a wet environment, but um, I don't think it's going to cause you any problems other than that. Um, as far as serviceability goes, this phone is very serviceable. As you can see, I've taken it apart using two screwdrivers and a guitar pick. Um, you need a, a P0 for the inner screws and a T6 for the outside. That's really all you need. Um, if you want to replace the battery, uh, it, it, this is the ribbon cable for it, and you want to just get under that and pop it up, like so. Um, I'm just going to do that now so I don't dork anything up by having power in here. The only issue is that the battery is glued pretty securely to the bottom of the, the other side of this case here. I haven't actually taken it out. I don't want to screw the battery up. So one of the things that can happen with these um, lithium polymer batteries like this, if, if they're stuck to something like that and you peel it off, you can actually damage the battery. My battery still works fine, so I don't want to screw it up. But if your battery was you know, not holding a charge or something and you don't care about screwing up your battery, it'd be easy to replace it. You just take something like this or a longer spludger and just cram it under there and peel this thing up. You're going to want to take off these two leads here um, and you, you won't have all this tape to take off, but, uh, take off these two ribbon cables and just make sure these two here are sort of out of the way and just peel that bad boy out of there. Um, and if there was a replacement battery available, which I haven't checked, there might be, um, I'm assuming it would have a thing you'd want to peel off the back. You're going to want to make sure you get off all the sticky material on the other side of this. And I'm assuming the new one's going to have a, a sticky thing on the back. That's assuming you can actually get new batteries for this, which I don't really even know. So far, it doesn't seem like Unihertz has been providing any support for parts for this phone at all. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, that's all I wanted to really show you. The camera, I guess, could potentially be another area of water ingress. I don't see it. It's just, it's got a you know lens in front of it. The front camera is the same way. Um, the proximity sensor, maybe. I don't think so. It's it's all kind of the same deal. They use a plexi lens in front of it. This proximity sensor is something that I, I've seen. It seems like about half the posts on the Facebook group are, are about this. Because if you get some dirt in here, this is you can't really try to tell. This is actually recessed in here a little ways. And if you get pocket lint or anything in there, it's going to think that your head is pressed against this, and it's going to keep the screen off when you're making a phone call, which is a pain in the ass because then you can't hang up the phone. Um, so the easy fix for that is to just take a little corner of your shirt, wipe it in there, and then the screen will come on. I wish there was a way to fully disable this. There may be, actually. I haven't really looked. But um, there's a warning about it. Normally, like, if you turn the screen on and it detects that this is covered, it'll tell you, hey, clean that. Um, that warning is super, super, super annoying. So I turned that off. Uh, it would be nice if there was a way to just fully disable this. But I... I don't think you'd want to do that, honestly, because what will happen in that case is the screen will stay on when you're on a phone call, your cheek will touch the hang-up button, and you'll hang up on somebody, probably somebody important. So it's better to have this than to not have it, even though it is really annoying. What I wish they'd done is I wish they'd put a little lens over the very top of this that was flush with the outside here so that you could clean it just by doing that and it wouldn't hold on to pocket lint as much. The front camera has the same problem with lint, but honestly, if you're using the front camera on this, you're missing the point. This front camera is garbage. It is terrible. It's one of the worst front cameras I've ever seen. Does it work for Zoom calls? Sure, whatever. You know, to prove that you're there, it works great. You're not, you're not taking National Geographic photos with this, though. The rear camera is also pretty terrible. But honestly, that's the compromise for a phone this cheap with this level of build quality and this level of 
you know, water resistance. And, uh, and I, I, if I'm going to be really trying to take good pictures, I'll bring a camera. Um, doesn't really bother me. The main thing I use this for is taking pictures of model numbers at work, and it's good for that. The autofocus isn't great. The camera app that shipped with this phone was junk. I use an app called A Better Camera. And actually, you, you get the paid version. I think it's like $4. It's a one-time fee. I really recommend it. It's worth it. It really makes this way more usable. It allows you to change the focal length and stuff like that. And it, it has a macro mode that actually works. Um, it's, it's just a huge night and day difference. Um, oh yeah, the USB port on the bottom is uh, a jelly bean off the shelf type deal. They're pretty, pretty water resistant. But those, those rubber bungs I was telling you about up here usually come with one that goes in here too. And if you're going to use, you know, wireless charge, I use wireless charging almost exclusively on this phone. So I, I could easily just put epoxy in there and probably be okay. But uh, I recommend getting a little rubber thing to put in there too if you're concerned about water ingress. If you plug up both of those, you could probably submerge this phone for an extended period of time, realistically speaking. Would I do it? Probably not unless I had to. Um, but I'm not shy about getting this phone wet. Like I said, if it gets dirty, I wash it off like I would wash my hands. So, you know, soap and water, not a big deal. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to put this back together now. Um, Unihertz, I wish they would really provide some support for this. Some, you know, some parts would be really nice. But other than that, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's a, it's not a big company. This isn't Samsung. This isn't LG. This isn't Motorola. Um, this isn't even ZTE. This is, <laughs> this is some one hung low brand. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm really happy with them. They've delivered on their promises in the past. This was a Kickstarter. I've had other Kickstarters for cool stuff that I've spent decent amounts of money on more than this that still haven't showed up. So, you know, <laughs> it's here. I give them props and they delivered it on time and they delivered, well, they delivered a little bit late, but they delivered what they said they were going to. And I'm happy with it. And I've, been getting more than my money's worth out of it. Do I recommend it? Not to everybody. If you want a phone with a keyboard, yes, this is probably the best bang for your buck. If you want to be able to take great pictures and post them on Instagram so that you can have people rub your tummy, this probably isn't it. Um, this isn't for you. But all in all, I'd say I'd give it an 8 out of 10. And, uh, I'm going to keep using it. I'm going to put it back together and I'm going to keep using it until they send me something better or if the, they release a sequel. But that's it. Have a good day.